Hello my good friends of YouTube. I've um, been playing with these thrister diodes and uh, cleaned them all up of course because they're all very very dusty and badly marked. Some of them have actually got um, scores in them where they've they've either been arcing against something against the uh, the contact of the heat sink that they were screwed against um, and you know they're a little bit badly well, well not badly but you know, a little bit scuffed and stuff. Yeah, look at this one, look. Either that is weathering, or it's internal arcs, or a reaction against other metals, or I'm not quite sure about that one. But they are a very, very large. In fact, let me get me, let me just come get me box which has got a load of different sizes and I'll show you the difference between how small the, some of them are and how big they are so one second I've got my phone plugged in because it's dead so that's why I can't take my phone with me hold on guys right There's some goodies. Let me show you a typical one. That's a, there you go. Here's a small one. This is just a, this is about 1,200 volts, I think, or 12 or 1,600 volts. And this is a, an even larger one. So you can see the difference. I've actually got a ray of them in there. Can you see there near the tape measure and that? Uh, Little two little cameras next to it, little CCTV cameras. Can you see them? Of course, you can. Well, that's an array of four of them, which a little diode bank I made quite some time ago. Still not used it actually, but uh, you can definitely see the size difference. There's your, your gate pin just there. There's a gate pin on there. That is some serious size, lovely porcelain. I mean, I've got a, a the biggest one I've got. I would say would be this one. But well, now that just takes the biscuit. I don't know if I've got any smaller ones. I mean, this is a very small one. You can see in there. Like a double sided thing, that one is. Oh, these are found at the scrapyard. That's a big thruster diode. So, let me show you one of these working and how to work it. Straightforward. Alright, one motor, that DC motor I got from the scrapyard. I've not cleaned it up yet, it's still a little bit weathered. How, how aluminium goes when it gets to weather. But uh, I've got it on that power supply just there, one with the uh, variable voltage. And I've got it whacked up, if I remember rightly. Yeah, it's up to about 26 volts. And uh, all it takes is the in here and just to touch it on there you just touch that onto there and it uh, cancels it out touch it again That's basically just closing the loop. See if you, it's not. Hold on. It's not a case of actually touching these together for it to stop, because it do it won't stop. So what you have to do, you just have to just close the loop. 
it won't turn off there and it won't turn off by touching these wires together it can only turn off by touching that together touching the, the uh, you know closing the loop between the two I was actually holding these wires on earlier on and I could feel a small shock like this was switching very fast and it was causing a flux of the, the, the voltage on the, the windings to come back through the, the wires into my fingers I could feel it like uh, uh, yeah you'd have to feel it yourself you know to uh, get one of these and try it yourself for you to understand what I mean it's quite strange but yeah I've tried them all and they all work which is pretty cool so I thought I'd share that one with you guys as you do as you know I always like to share my videos with you guys thanks for watching look after yourselves speak again